Go to badboymembership.com. You'll go from not getting what you want when it comes to you dealing with women to actually getting what you want, to being the guy women want to be with, women want to date, women want to have sex with. All you need to do is go to badboymembership.com. It needs to be guiding the conversation that relates to the community, not people from the outside, period. My last question to you, Doc, is um you you dropped this a couple of weeks ago while the Olympics was going on. It was in reference to Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg's commentary on the Olympics. They were doing some comedy stuff. I thought I've I seen maybe a clip or two. I thought it was pretty funny, but you weren't very amused by it. In fact, you had a lot of um a very well put together written statement that you wrote on it. I'm going to read the first paragraph and allow you to elaborate. So black people are often typecast in our society and we are mistakenly led to believe that being on TV or being famous is definitive is a definitive sign of success. Can you mm -hmm. can you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, you know, this is not against anything against Kevin Hart or Snoop Dogg at all. Um, I think that's fine. I, I just think that we need to pay attention to how so many of the of the black men in particular that we uh that we see on TV that we think are the most prominent successful black men. Malcolm X talked about this. A lot of them are presented as clowns. You know, for when black men are presented on national media, it's usually either because they are gay or they are um, or funny, uh, you know, or, or whatever, or, or, or extremely ignorant or one of those categories. Right. If you fit a stereotype uh, and this goes all the way back to slavery, then you're going to be in a certain space. You're going to get a certain amount of prominence. Uh, if you don't fit the stereotype, then you don't exist. So uh, mo nine times out of 10, when you see black people in a role like that, uh, you got to look at S Snoop and Kevin Hart. They're not up there. They're not being presented as serious black men who, are, who can be serious about anything. They're presented as a comedy team, right? And, and, and that's fine, right? You need comedians. Comedians are great, but comedians are not supposed to be uh, the most relevant members of your community. Uh, the most relevant people in the black community are, are leaders. You know, Joe Biden is president of the United States. You know, it's, it, you know, people like that. It's not they're like the comedians are not leading the white community. The comedians and the and the performers are not leading the Jewish community. It is the black community that gets led by uh, comedians, uh, rappers, athletes or just people that that fit into some sort of uh, pre-existing narrative. Right. You know, maybe you're, you're a prominent Democrat or whatever. And, and it, that's a hard argument to make. Because people think you're attacking or you're dissing people. This is not a diss on Kevin Hart or a diss on Snoop Dogg. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I don't even really address those individuals because, because if you have if you want to have a conversation, if a puppet is saying something that you don't like, you don't go talk to the puppet, mm -hmm. right? You don't you, you I don't want to talk to the puppet. I want to talk to the puppet master. You know, I want to talk to the person who's got his hand up your ass is telling you what to say. Right. Because talking to the puppet does nothing, right? So I'm not really talking to the Snoop or Kevin Hart or Lizzo or anybody, I want to talk to the person who's paying them to do what they do, because that's where the insidious white supremacy, racism, whatever you want to call it, is occurring. Bomb, bomb, bombs away. One last question. Um, do you ever get a chance to iron things out with Mark Lamont Hill? <laughs> Did you have a conversation? Because y'all are both very bright minds. And uh, it was just kind of crazy how that happened. But I did see how you posted up the um, the owner of the Black News Channel. I think he was like a Pakistani individual. Um, did you guys talk? No. Nah, well, you know, Mark could call me anytime and I would talk to him. Right. Uh, you know, because I, I just believe as a man, that's what you should be able to do. Put your shit to the side and have a conversation if necessary. I would say that about really, any, really anybody who's ever felt uncomfortable with something I said. And I, I'll even say their names. You got Mark on my heel, Kwame Brown, Roland Martin. Uh, and uh, there's one more. I can't remember everybody's name. But right. most of those guys, if they called me, Umar, Umar Johnson, that's another. If any of those men called me as a man and said, hey, brother, I want to talk to you about what you said about me, I'd be like, okay, sure, let's talk. And if they said, let's put the stuff to the side and let's move forward as friends and find our common ground, I would say, absolutely. Sounds good. Let's do it. And I would really mean that. And I, I and so what I think is really interesting to me is I and I, I guess I don't know maybe I get under I got under Mark's skin because I know Roland's been mad at me for a decade uh, and uh, even though I think we could have done a lot of great things together we know Kwame Brown did eighteen thousand videos about me right <laughs> I'm talking about my wife people he's never met before knows nothing about my life but whatever right, right. And, and so maybe I maybe when I speak I have a way of sounding harsher than than I really intend to be and uh, and if I hurt people's feelings I apologize for that. 
But uh, again, I think with Mark, um, I don't think he's stupid. Um, I helped him get his career started way back in the day. I remember he called me in 2006 and asked me how to get on TV. And I told him everything I know. I was very impressed with Mark's uh, success. Uh, I'm impressed with his hustle. Uh, I think he is very intelligent, but I think he needs to stop. He needs to kind of deal with the fact that many people feel that he's a puppet for the white liberal establishment. Uh, you know, when you're walking around and you're saying things like men can get pregnant and and all this other stuff. And, you know, you, you know, repeating talking points of white liberals, it, it causes you to lose a lot of credibility in the black community. I'm not the only one who feels this way. Now, when you talk about the black news channel, you're right. Um, Shag Khan, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who's Pakistani, uh -huh. is the primary investor in the black news channel. Uh, so the question I ask, which is a logical question, maybe this is where I piss people off because I, I think we lay it out and it's, you can't, it's hard to debate this. As I said, what if as a black man, I went and started the Pakistani news channel and wanted to create a news platform that was controlling the thinking of Pakistanis in Pakistan and around the world? Do you think they would support that channel? Or what if I wanted to create the Jewish news channel mm -hmm. and I was pushing, pumping my, my news and my views into the Jewish community? Would they go for that? They wouldn't. They wouldn't. So, so if it's not okay for me to go start the Jewish news channel or the Pakistani news channel, why is it okay for a Jewish person or a Pakistani? Because a Jewish Jewish family owns BET. Why is it okay for them to come and create the Black news channel? We think it's okay because we don't have any standards, right? So, so basically, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the Black news channel, that, that's just what it is. I mean, they they can be mad about it, uh, but the reason they're mad is because it's true. So, uh, so I'm not mad at Mark. I don't hate him. I, I just, you know, and, and really it's just, it's, I think it's honestly all in fun. I know Mark says some crazy stuff like, oh, you're, you're an epic failure and whatever. And I know that's not true. Like that stuff, that's like calling me dumb. I, I might be an asshole, but I know I'm not dumb. So, so that, that stuff you just kind of yeah. laugh about. You know, we were talking before we got on about the, I don't know if you've seen the, the Afghanistan that the Air Force plane was going and then there was a bunch of Afghanistan civilians trying to hang on to the plane and people were getting ran over. Shit was wild. And it was just brought to us. We I forgot what made us bring up talk about the Taliban and stuff, but it was like it's interesting that those are America's quote unquote enemies. And we don't wish violence on anybody. But when you look at police brutality and we see on TV, it's them killing black men. When you see gas stations and maxi marts, you see who it's owned mm -hmm. by. So if they were really enemies, wouldn't you think common sense would tell you as a naive American that if that's the enemy, those are the people that the police would be abusing or things like that. But you don't ever see that shit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, so you're saying that they abuse us, but not like the the Taliban? Is that what you mean? You would think that, but just because we get the the media telling us that we're at war with these Pakistanians, or we're at war with Afghanistan, or we're at war with somebody in the Middle East, that when they come over here, you would think that based off mm -hmm. of like you've seen Asian hate and all this kind of shit, that we would see some Pakistani or Middle Eastern quote unquote hate. Not that we want to see it, but you would think that you would assume that because we're at war with them, but all we see them doing is owning gas stations and Maxi Marts and owning <laughs> Jaguars and shit. Like, it's, it's interesting. Well, you know, people should go read uh, Dr. Claude Anderson's books like Black Labor, White Wealth, and Powernomics, mm -hmm. because what he does is he explains how when immigrants come into the country, yeah. they're kind of just sort of this subtle contract where they help them understand like, look, don't mess with the African-Americans. The African-Americans, those are our slaves, and, and they're, they're, they're all messed up in the head. So this is the lower class. As long as you don't over associate with these people, then you're good with us. And uh, and that's really true. Actually, the Chinese do that. The Chinese do that with um, people from uh, Tibet. I believe it's Tibet. Like if you go to China and say you're going to Tibet or to see the Dalai Lama and the monks and all that, like the Chinese government will be like, yo, why, why are you doing that? Like, or why, why do you want to go to Thailand? Why, 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 why are you associated with Thailand? Because those are the enemies of, of the Chinese government, right? So in the United States, we are the enemies of the US government. We are like Cinderella, uh, where the government's like the stepmother, you know, and as long as you come in and you don't talk to Cinderella, then, then you're good. So effectively, all the immigrant groups are put ahead of black people and black people support that because we see ourselves in a subordinate role also. Uh, and so in terms of, of, of that, you know, of the stuff that's happening in Afghanistan, that's another example of that divide and conquer that we were talking about earlier, where basically... Um, we spent billions of dollars building a fake military in Afghanistan that completely folded once uh, the U.S. pulled out. And the U.S. pulling out is very just like what happened in Vietnam, where Saigon fell. And all the people that aligned with the United States were getting killed because they sided with the Americans. Same thing happened in Iran when the Shah of Iran went down. So, so this is a pattern, right? And you can learn from this. And what you can really learn is that these people will use you 
if you're dumb enough to be used, right? So a lot of Negroes, I see a lot of black folks in America that will let the Democrat or the Republican parties use them. And then when they don't back you anymore, it becomes like the fall of Saigon. They, they will destroy your, all your relationships with all the people that really care about you so that they can use you to get elected or they can use you for a specific purpose. And then after they're done with you, they kind of throw you to the side. So, uh, so right now in Afghanistan, you're seeing America kind of say, okay, we're done using Afghanistan. Now we're just going to throw them to the side and let, let the chips fall where they may. So if you don't care about yourself and look out for yourself and, and, and fully represent yourself and say, no, stay out of here. We don't want, we don't want you here. Then that's what they're going to do. That's why I tell black people from the very beginning, do not get overcommitted to the Democrat or Republican parties. Be one, black first. Be black first, and then you can be a Democrat. You can be LGBT. You can be whatever the hell you want, as long as you understand where your sovereign space is and where your true support is coming from, and that's going to come from your people. Black people don't have any friends. So, so when you tell me somebody's my ally, I look at you like you, you need another five years of education to understand how America really works. Pop, we got Dr. Boyce Watkins here on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. Doc, go ahead and drop your convention dates and uh, your social media outlets for people who didn't hear about it already, please. All right, cool. The uh, the All Black National Convention takes place in Orlando, Florida, uh, the weekend of October 29th through November 1st. And uh, we're going to do a lot of stuff on uh, every aspect of business, everything from stock market investing to starting your own company, et cetera. We have experts there that can help you. We're going to have panels on politics, relationships, hip hop, everything else. I know you guys are accepting my invitation, so I can't wait to uh, see you guys in person again. Uh, also, we're going to have uh, things like speed dating. We're going to have the Black Excellence Awards. We're going to do a lot of really great stuff while we're there. And it's really family friendly. So the URL for that is allblacknationalconvention.com. That's allblacknationalconvention.com. And uh, also my social media is The Real Boyce Watkins on Instagram. So uh, I, I try to encourage people to think. Uh, people don't have to agree with me. I just want people to use their brain because if you're if you're black and you're not critically thinking about what's going on around you, then you're going to get sucked into something. And I just want people to be able to make sound decisions with their lives and, 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 and rebuild families and all the things we need as a people. So we definitely appreciate you, Doc, yes. as always, on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast. This was an electric episode. Yes. Definitely appreciate all your perspectives and every question we answered. Very transparent, as always. Dr. Boyce Watkins on the Hip Hop Uncensored <laughs> podcast.